All right, for this experiment, I'm going to have a little fun with high voltage. I've got a 9,000 volt transformer hooked up to this wood here. Only about 35 milliamps of current. And uh, what I'm going to do is show you how much power there is here. Oh, that's quite a, quite a spark we're getting there. Now if I touch it to different parts of the wood, it's almost like a firework. It burns its own little carbon trails in the wood. Look at that. Very deadly voltage. or It's not just voltage, it's voltage and current. If it were a high voltage alone with no current, it wouldn't hurt you. If it were a high current with low voltage, it wouldn't hurt you. In fact, I can take my hand, put it right across the car battery terminals, and if I'm lucky, I might feel a little bit of something, but a lot of times you don't feel anything at all, depending on how moist your fingers are. It's interesting how that works. Kind of, just, kind of shows you the difference between uh, voltage and current. Anyway, if you're into making unusual art, I suppose this is one way to make some rather interesting art. Well, I better quit before I burn the place down. Now this time I've changed something around. I've got a uh, different power supply. I've got probably over 300 amperes here because I've got this whole bank of capacitors charged up. Hope you can see that okay. And I did the same thing. I put a screw into this block of wood and I'm going to take the other wire from my bank of capacitors that are charged to only uh, about 250 volts and uh, hundreds of amperes. And you can see you don't get any sparks at all. There's no high voltage here that can overcome the resistance of the wood. There's high current but not high voltage so you can see I can move this around and I don't get any effect whatsoever. On the other hand, I can do something with this circuit. I guess you can call it a circuit. I can do something with this I couldn't do with the other gizmo. I can take something that has low resistance, like a penny, and I can, uh, let's see if I can do this safely without killing myself. I'm going to put this penny across these two terminals here. By the way, this penny is going to be turned into jewelry, so nothing illegal about be facing American currency as long as you're turning it into jewelry wouldn't want to break the law I mean I guess it's okay to print money out of the Federal Reserve but you wouldn't want to deface a penny but anyway here we go well you can see my penny uh, kinda changed its characteristics a little bit I guess that pretty much discharged it yeah, that's not the same penny it was. Uh, it'll make a nice piece of jewelry. Anyway, um, kind of shows you the difference between voltage and current. Now, I thought it'd be interesting to do the same experiment, showing how you can put a high voltage across the penny. And it doesn't really, I don't see it leaving any visible marks on the penny. I've got this high voltage arcing right across to it. Oops. I don't want it to go to the wood, I want it to go right to the penny. And you can even short the wires out. Again, we're looking at a high voltage, low current. So that shows you how um, a high voltage can overcome resistance, and yet a low voltage, high current can't. Now when you've got a combination of uh, high voltage and high current, then you've got a deadly uh, combination there. You definitely wouldn't want to touch that. I'll show you something else kind of interesting. Here we've got a little battery, a little 12 volt battery. I can actually touch this with my fingers. I don't feel anything because of the resistance in my body. But if we take something with low resistance, like this piece of wire here, and drop it across here, it glows red hot and it just melts. Ouch, a little bit on the hot side. Um, that also shows the difference between voltage and current. Well, I demonstrated earlier how I'm able to touch my fingers right across the battery terminals, and it doesn't shock me at all. 
because of the amount of resistance in my body, while at the same time if I take this paper clip and put it across the terminals, it has low resistance, it turns red hot. Yikes! Oh, that is hot. Anyway, you can see the, the way resistance uh, will stop the flow of energy. Again, I can touch across here, it's not a problem whatsoever. Now, most electronic components, including wire, has a certain amount of resistance to it. Resistors, by the way, they have different sizes and shapes. This is one type of resistor. This is another type of resistor. The, the color bands on it represent how much resistance it has in it. Even this coil of wire has a certain amount of resistance, just like my body does, or the block of wood, or the penny. Everything's got some degree of resistance. And there's a formula you can use called Ohm's Law that will help you determine how much current will flow into a circuit based on how much resistance you have and how much voltage you apply. Let me put it in simpler terms. I remember a long time ago I was building a powerful electric magnet. had a coil and it was something like this. And I knew that I could only put in about two amperes of current before the wire would melt inside of the coil. So I thought to myself, well how will I know exactly how much power how much voltage I can apply to this coil before it cooks it. Well, since I knew uh, that I wasn't able to put more than two amperes of current into the coil, I was able to use Ohm's Law to figure that out. For those of you not familiar with Ohm's Law, I'll give it to you in the simplest terms I know how. Each one of these letters represents something. E represents voltage, I represents current or amps, and R represents resistance. Now let's just say that I wanted to know how much current would flow through this coil here that has a resistance of 2 ohms. What I would do is I'd cover up the I and it pretty much tells me what to do. We simply divide this R, which is 2 ohms, into my battery voltage, which in this case, let's say I was applying a 12 volts from this battery. So since I'm looking for I, amperes, I divide 2 into 12 volts. Oh, guess what? That that amounts to 6 amperes. That would cook this coil. Now, I might be able to hook it up real quickly at that current, but I'm going to have to change something on my formula here. So what if I change... Uh, what if I have a bigger coil that has more resistance? Uh, let's say I had it um, double the size. Instead of 2 ohms, it's 4 ohms. And I divide 4 into 12. No, now I'm talking about 3 amperes. That's still too high. Okay, so what if I... Um, change my resistance of the coil, make it even bigger, or change, how about, how about this, how about I change the battery voltage? I can change the battery voltage to, um, I can change the battery voltage to 2 ohms, I'm sorry, 2 volts. So I'd simply divide the resistance of 2 ohms into the 2 volts, and that means 1 amp will flow. Well, that's too, too low. Um, so how about I double the voltage? I change E to 4 volts. Now when I divide R into E, 2 ohms into uh, 4 volts, I get 2 amperes. So that would be the ideal amount of resistance and voltage to uh, hook the maximum power into this coil without burning it up.